Folks, Good so evening. welcome Tommy. Yeah. Thank you. Nice to be back from Music City Roots. Thank you Thanks for coming back so straight. soon. It was a year ago. In the years since, you have made a spectacular album at a venue dear to your heart. Special thing, live at the Ryman. Uh huh. And congratulations on that, Thank both you. the gig and the album. The album is beautiful. You can hear that special room in right. the recording very beautifully. Oh, it's, uh, it's an incredible venue, of course. Yeah. And um, it, was, uh, it was a live recording. I mean, I, I didn't try to... Uh, to do anything different than, than what I was doing on that tour. That was my first question. I just question. tried to play as best I could, but I, I was there for the audience. Mm -hmm. um, the Ryman is one of those places, on the stage, you don't hear the sound in the room that, that well. You oh, have wow. to walk right forward to the edge of the stage, and then you hear the people and the music coming out, the, the PA. So that? I spent most of the night um, almost leaning like that forward over the edge so I could hear the people and hear the music. Right. Yeah. But you like to roam the stage. You're free, you're wireless, so you yeah. like to really you I know, like physically to get, around. get into it. Absolutely. Well, when it's just you, mm -hmm. you, you can go wherever you damn well please. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, and play whatever you like. And it is just you, the solo mm. instrument. When we spoke a few mm. uh, weeks ago for a longer interview, I was asking about, you know, what when you embraced the solo instrument, the solo performing mode, and uh -huh. made that your life. You've done duo projects, but yeah. typically Tommy Manuel is a solo instrumentalist. Well, I spent most of my young years uh, playing in bands. So I've been a, a, a guitar player in a band, I've been a singer in a band, I've been a bass player, I've been a drummer. Uh -huh. uh, and I've booked bands. I, I've had a go at everything. I've sold guitars, repaired guitars. Uh -huh. Uh, set up guitars, recommended guitars. <laughs> I've had a go at, at everything to do with with the music business. And um, my dream when I was a kid was to come here to Nashville to meet my hero, Chet Atkins. And uh, and that, that happened. In 1980, I made the pilgrimage here. And uh, it was a great, it was my first trip here to the United States. I saw Elton John at the, yeah. at the Hollywood Bowl. Uh -huh. And then I came here to Nashville, met Chet, played with, with him here, had a, had a couple of days of hanging out and hearing stories and all that kind of stuff. Then I went to New York and I saw Buddy Rich. So when <laughs> I went back to Australia, I was fit to explode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going back. And let's tell folks that uh, Chet knew you were coming to a point You'd written him when you were a kid, That's and right. he wrote you back and he said, did. "Keep going, kid. And if you ever come That's to Nashville, right. come see me." Exactly. Uh, and when you when you came uh, for real uh, to see him, how did you actually set the meeting up? Well, I rang the office, uh, and I'd been told, "You don't call until after 10 a.m." Yeah. So at one minute past 10, <laughs> I called on the first day, and his secretary said, uh, "Oh, M Mr. Atkins is playing golf." And, and he'll be out for the day. Then the next day, Mr. Atkins is in the studio. He'll be out for the day. So the third morning, I rang at one minute past 10, and he answered the phone. Oh, wow, great. And I said, uh, it's Tommy Emanuel from Australia. And he said, where are you? <laughs> and I said, I'm down the road at the Holiday Inn. He said, well, come on down. I'll see you right now. So I jumped in the car with my heart pounding in my chest. Yeah. And uh, I'm waiting downstairs, and all my terror and fear came to grip me mm -hmm. as I was about to meet my hero. And I suddenly realized, if I play for him, he's going to think I'm just a bad version of him, and, and, and he'll hate it. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, what can I play? What can I do? You know, and I was sitting there trembling and sweating and afraid, and he came down the stairs and took one look at me and must have known exactly what I was going through and came over and talked to me and put his arm around me and told me a few things and kind of calmed me down. Then he said, you want to pick a little? And I said, sure. Is there a mustache in Mexico? And uh, we went into this room at the side. <laughs> Does a one-legged duck swim in a circle? And uh, so I started playing this tune and uh, he's watching me. And he goes, I didn't do that. 
I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. And he was pointing out all the things that I was doing Licks that, that were weren't wrong. his. Yeah, you right. know. So it was very encouraging, of course, and we became instant friends, and we, and we became like father and son later in life as well. And so made records together, performed together, and it was a dream come true for a, a boy from down under. That's for sure. And and being back here uh, is is part of that dream. Being on this show again is thanks, Tom. is a wonderful thing. And thanks no, for having a lot. me. It means the world to us. We appreciate You're that. Welcome. That's why everybody's here tonight. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting you, you, you anticipated a question halfway, which was how do you think you, the solo guitar is an instrument that both lets, ah. an, instrument, lets an artist have a, a very unique voice, but there's also these ways of playing. And the other big influence on you, Merle Travis, yeah. you don't do the same thing that Merle Travis and Chet Atkins do unless you're playing in their style. You play, yeah. uh, you play a lot of different feelings. You could yeah. say there's a little bit of Michael Hedges in there too, and a little bit of Will Ackerman and the, the airy thing. But when we talked, you talked about melody being the number one yeah. thing. And well, then I'm also, a songwriter. You yeah. know, I'm trying to tell stories with my songs. And um, I try to play, the, I try, when I play, I don't think like a solo guitar player at all. Um, I think like a band and I hear the band in my head. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just put it all out there. It's all part of the uh, optical illusion that's going on. <laughs> you know? That's a good way to put it. But you have also have to have. There's a lot of a lot of work goes into being able to do there's it. There's a lot of work goes into it, and it, it never ends, as you know, Craig. Any projects coming up that you'd like to tell folks about before we move? Oh, on? sure. Um, John Knowles and I have recorded a, an album uh, of duets together. It's, it's an album of love songs. Nashville-based CGP, another, like yourself. Another uh, guitar player. I, I have just re uh, completed an album of duets with uh, some of my favorite artists, with Jason Isbell and uh, Ricky Skaggs and Rodney Crowell and uh, wow. Mark Knopfler. Sounds fun. And uh, yeah, some, some really wonderful artists and I'm, I'm looking forward. That album will be out in the, in the new year. Great, great. Well, there's more to, more to watch. And you, there's uh, more to you come, are, you are but rolling. wait, yes. there's more. <laughs> there always is with Tommy Manuel. One more time for Tommy, he'll be back Thank to play you so for much. you at the end of the show. So good to see you.